Welcome to another edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 417. I'm Kevin Coulson. And I'm George Conger. Today's July 6th, 2018. Okay, before we get started, we need you to like, share, comment, and subscribe to today's show. Uh, if you go to our YouTube page, you can click the subscribe button. If you are on Facebook or you're on YouTube and you want to comment, you're welcome to comment. Uh, please share, and we recommend that you do this before you watch the entire episode. George, how's it going? Oh, great. Just wonderful. I'm so glad I'm not in Austin, Texas in that heat and humidity. I couldn't swing it, both physically, you know, that trip to Jerusalem just took it out of me, and the traveling, and and then all the parish work, and to basically up and three days later head off to General Convention in Austin, that, that wasn't going to work easily. No, that, So thank goodness for modern technology, I can watch everything online, and we've got our friend Jeff Walton on site. So we're doing just fine as a yeah. news organization. Oh, and then I'm seeing bishops are writing reports every day. What's going on? What you need to worry about? What I fear and what you need to ignore. So, you know, that's kind of cool that we get to watch, you know, uh, updates on social media from uh, the participants. Now, we could do GAFCON news. We probably have enough for at least five or six more episodes. But let's just take a break and talk a little bit about General Convention news uh, because a lot is going on. Uh, but George and I kind of want to talk about how important what's going on really is in the large scheme of things. And uh, let's just talk a little bit about how General Convention is made up. You have House of Deputies, House of Bishops, um, yeah, and uh, they're part of this body that's uh, a decision-making body, George. Well, it claims to be. It claims to be. General convention really has reached the point of it's no longer useful. It's too big. Mm -hmm. Each diocese, I believe there are 104 dioceses, give or take a few, gets to send four lay and four clergy delegates. So that's 800 people. Then every bishop goes, and every retired bishop goes, and there are more retired bishops right now than actual bishop bishops. So that's another 300 people, plus the hangers-on, and they vary. It's about 2,000 people in the sweltering heat of a Texas uh, summer. And they gather for 10 days, and 90% of the stuff that they do is of absolutely no interest or consequence to anybody, not even to the people there. Uh, this is the seventh general convention I've covered gavel to gavel, and I have to tell you, so much, it's like condo board politics. Oh, God, don't even say that. Oh, my. And that... it has as much, it has as much value to your life as the condominium association fights. It's nasty, it's particularly unchristian, and once upon a time, general, the Episcopal, this is true of all organizations, sure. not just the Episcopal Church. But there, people, successful men and women, lent their time and energies to items outside their own profession or businesses. J.P. So Morgan, J. P. I J. mean, P. Morgan, all the time. J.P. Morgan founded the Church Pension Fund, and he was a very involved and active in the affairs of the Episcopal Church. George Bush, way back when, was a member of the. Uh, I think he was a member of the standing of uh, the. George Bush Sr. Yeah. was heavily involved in church affairs. At one time, uh, Franklin Roosevelt was warden, senior warden of his parish in Hyde Park, even when he was president down in Washington. Yeah. He went up once a month to the vestry meetings. And George Washington was on the vestry. Yes. Now, what does all this mean? We have no George Washington's, <laughs> J.P. Morgan's, uh, not even George H.W. Herbert Walker Bush's nope. in general convention. We have the sort of people who run for the condo board. The school or board. Run, or, or for local city elections. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is that you get a few, you get a few good people, and there are some good people at general Absolutely. convention. By good, I mean bright, intelligent, thoughtful people. Mm -hmm. And then you have a disproportionately large number of kooks and nuts. Lots and of kooks, fruits, twigs, things. nuts, sticks. Monomaniacs, yes. <laughs> monomaniacs who've got one issue on their brain, and they don't care about anything else. Now, 
who goes now a deputy is elected by a diocesan convention well, yeah yeah let's talk about the a delegate versus a deputy the deputy the deputies the people of general convention are deputies mm -hmm. they're not delegates now right. what's the difference a delegate is sent to uh, articulate the view of their sending institution a deputy is elected to be their own person a body so with they, their own mind yes so they may or may not represent the mindset of their diocese now most dioceses will elect people who sort of represent the status quo but you have situation where there have been people who've been there seven eight ten twenty years who through inertia get kept getting reelected because they bothered to show up to committee meetings they bothered to go to these things so first off we need to understand that the activists who are at general convention are in no way representative of the body of the church as a whole unfortunately during these seven to ten day periods they get to speak on behalf of the church so when the Episcopal Church supports free Mamu Umumia Abu Jamal from death penalty in Philadelphia for killing a cop they say the Episcopal Church wants a cop killer freed no the general convention on that day a group of people decided they wanted that the Episcopal Church supports abortion no it doesn't the general convention or actually the executive council on that day supports general convention general convention only has authority during the 10 days or so when it's in session and they pass resolutions which for the most part are advisory I have to tell you, Kevin, in my 20 plus years as being an Episcopal priest, the only thing that has caused people in my congregation any grief at a general convention is when they asked us to forbid smoking inside the church. Oh. Yeah, that's... All the gay marriage, <laughs> all, the, all this stuff had nothing to do with anything. Yeah. Now, why is that? Well, let's say general convention recommends, let's change the prayer book and add in all this gay marriage stuff and... So the newspapers will say, or we're changing the Trinity from Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, Manny, Mo, and Jack. I don't know what it is. Oh, there you go. So, yes. so people will say, oh, George, what will you do? You'll be forced to marry gay people and all this and that. And the answer is nobody can force me to do anything. Unless the, somebody's willing to spend 2000 bucks to buy me new prayer books, I'm not getting new prayer books unless somebody is there to record every one of my they haven't yet put smoke detectors in the bathroom to make sure we're following the no smoking uh ordinance i don't think it just doesn't work that way no. well let's talk a little bit like in uh england they have general synod and yeah, it's it, very it, different it, general it, synod. synod's very different, different because a lot's decided beforehand or general discussed. synod general synod looks at a, a limited set of issues that are discussed beforehand they put out briefing papers and they actually study and discuss these issues general convention does stuff on the fly and they put out hundreds if not thousands of things to talk about um, general synod meets every six months general convention every three years general synod in conjunction with the archbishops council and other bodies sets and organizes the church the Episcopal Church is run by its diocese and we get our steering from the general convention but unless you want to stand at the middle of the street in Tiananmen Square while the tanks are moving to you you're not going to get run over if they do something that you find offensive or awful well, I'll give you a working example uh, one of the issues before general convention is prayer book revision last general convention they reached a compromise saying you want to do gay marriage fine but you can't make us do it and you can't force us to allow people to do it in our diocese that was the, that was the uh, agreement live and let live for in essence so in central florida no gay marriage no chance of gay marriage not going to happen well the liberals think that this is a right that must be available to everybody everywhere and so they want to take away that right of a diocese to say no to the one central florida we may have one parish that wants to do gay marriage Theoretically, I don't think that's actually a live issue. Mm -hmm. They want to take away the right for Bishop Brewer to say no. Well, in essence, what they're doing is changing us to a congregational polity. 
where the local church decides what they want or don't want, and the bishop basically is there as a service provider. You want one of me? Okay, it, it's sort of like an affinity diocese and ACNA or something. Sure. Uh, well, Leo, uh, excuse me, Lloyd Allen, Bishop of Honduras, got up at yesterday during the debates and said, look, we're not going to change in Honduras. And if you want to depose me, fine, go ahead. But this is not something we will stand for. And you, what you'll probably find is a way to make this work. In other words, they're not going to depose Lloyd Allen. They'll depose bishops who make an ass out of himself and upset the status quo. But they're not going to depose Greg Brewer or Bill Love or anybody because Catherine Jefferson sure is gone. That was the variable that was different. She was a real witch. Uh, <laughs> but they're not going to do that anymore. And But at the same time, they want to be able to say, look at us, look at this gay victory that we have. Well, so uh, what does that all mean? Not really that much. I think what you find in General Convention, though, is General Convention is a symptom of a broken church. Oh, yes, okay. yes. It's not as if a bunch of kooks have sort of usurped the authority. There are a lot of kooks in the Episcopal Church, just as a lot of kooks. Uh, you go to any church convention of any. I've been to a few ACNA things where you get these guys come to, start talking about which ecumenical councils we're going to involve. And you go, oh my God, kooks or kooks or kooks. <laughs> you get them. Just whether you. It's, you know, you yeah. get these monomaniacs in every or religious organization. Uh, but the kooks are representative of the wider kookness in the society. But they don't represent everybody. No, they don't. But it, if you look at like the General Convention as the UN, uh, you have these people who have their one thing they talk about all the time. The UN has a resolution every other week uh, calling for Israel to be overthrown. Uh, yes. Israel is the bad guy. In the same way at General Convention, you have the same kooks with their same topics uh, every time. Uh, and I went to Anaheim, I went to Columbus, and I, I was absolutely freaked out by how much, I'm not going to say authority, but sway and say they have for those 10 days. Now, you need to understand, at the end of the day, it's the bishops who run the church. Mm -hmm. And this is a way for, now, I'm giving you deep, dark secrets, folks, and most people will think I'm not. Do we should play some music here, but go on. This, this is a way to let off steam. Allow the kooks and nuts to have their moment in the sun while you get on with the actual business of doing church. You're never going to... Uh, you can have polite liquidations and purges and get rid of the kooks and nuts, but then you get fresh kooks and nuts. Just... Oh, we live in a broken, fallen, sinful world, and, that's, and sin is part of the church. And church politics is a particularly nasty business. It's an evil business. It is not representative of the kingdom of God. Well, we have to find a way to live with the brokenness in this world, and allowing the kooks and nuts to sound off does, is, is a safe way well, I don't for think, us to continue the work of the church. I don't think everybody shares your conviction that uh, General Convention isn't that important. Uh, we saw the communion partners put out a letter uh, before General Convention that said, listen, there's a possibility you guys are going to change the prayer book and take away our authority uh, to uh, allow or disallow same-sex marriages in our diocese. Um, we're willing to kind of meet you halfway. Maybe if we allow depot, you won't do this. And I think they're kind of saying the General Convention does have the power. No, I'm not saying it's unimportant, okay. but it is not an issue of salvation. It's not an issue, uh, to my mind, that is worth destroying people's lives and faiths over. Um, there's a difference between urgent and important. General Convention does important things. It seldom, if ever, does anything that's urgent or life-changing. Uh, the communion partners, not all of them, Central, uh, Southwest Florida, Florida, Albany didn't sign on to this statement, as well as another number of churches who don't do gay marriage. Now, we don't know why. I've not nailed people down on this because I'm not there. But my guess is it's summer vacation, laziness, and I don't like you, so I'm not going to sign your statement. Uh, you People underestimate 
the role pettiness plays in the church life. No, but and the communion partners want to get their point out. But at the end of the day, there's a very broken, misguided Anglo-Catholic understanding of the church that is rather new in the great scheme of things. It's only about 100, 150 years old. And, it'll, and it basically sees this hierarchical pyramid. And some people like to put the bishop, some people like to put the province, some people like to put Canterbury at the top. It doesn't work that way. Christ is at the top. And if you allow these things to stand between you and your faith in Jesus Christ, you're creating an, an, an idol. I would say general convention is a form of idolatry for many people. And therefore, to have a healthy view of it, you need to have distance and a bit of skepticism. That's different from saying it's not un, it's unimportant. No. It's just not an issue that is worth oh, working oneself up over. Sure. Well, let's talk a little bit about what happens on the minutia inside general convention. Um, a lot happens over this huge convention center. They had their booth set up on one side, um, and then throughout the hallways, there's booths here and there. They have uh, House of Deputies, House of uh, Bishops. Um, and then people get to talk at these meetings that are off to the side and uh, during the House of Deputies and House of uh, um, Bishops. We heard yesterday that a person who was speaking uh, was not speaking the platform they were supposed to and the interpreter walked away uh, tell me what you heard about that that's uh, first little crises or scandal mm -hmm. and if now let's sort of shift out of being high-minded to being political okay <laughs> okay, okay we, we're on the okay, condo we're, board now go <laughs> we're, we're, we're in the condo board discussion this was a gift from heaven for the conservatives De deputies from Honduras were speaking in committee hearings, voicing opposition to changing the prayer book. The interpreter, the general convention official, the interpreter walked away and refused to translate for them because they were offering views that were anti-gay marriage. A formal, comp and so what happened? Bishop on Anglican uh, Inc. we posted a video from Bishop Greg Viewer of Greg Brewer Bishop of Central Florida saying, "You know, you should, you should be able to get that name correct." I should. <laughs> he said, "You know, I can't believe that we're still talking about racism. That we don't want we want black people, we want Hispanics to be, show up for the photos, but we don't actually want to hear what they have to say. And so, if we have a white Hispanic who finds it offensive what these poor our poor brown brothers from Honduras are saying, we can shut them up by turning off the microphone." Mm -hmm. I mean, that is truly offensive. And we're investigating because we've been told who this translator is, was, and that person holds a high office in the national church. And if it is true, it's a tremendous scandal. We can't say it now because we haven't been able to verify it. I have a formal query to this point. But in his speech sermon, Michael Curry, at, that opened for the said all the things that conservatives wanted to hear to make them think that he is sympathetic to their cause, that he wants to hold the ship together, he wants everybody to be able to walk forward together in unity, and what he is essentially doing is standing and blocking the moves to mandate one view, one action, one voice on a specific issue. And the way General Convention is organized, that's easier to do than you would think. Well, and that's the interesting, they didn't turn his mic off. No. You know, he, he was allowed to speak. But whenever, when I went to the first Columbus General Convention that I attended, I met what I would call, for the first time, liberal supremacists. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, and... It, Rush Limbaugh calls them liberal fascists. Liberal fascists. I'm gonna go with supremacists because it'll piss them off. And, uh, you know, they, they're just, so keen on their ideology and promoting one race over other, one idea over other, to the point that they won't listen to any other arguments. Uh, that they're talk ideologues, over. they're authoritarians. Yeah. And I've been at this long enough now to see that most of those, many of those people come a cropper. Charles Benison, John Bruno, 
uh, Bishop Pike, Jack Spong, were ideologues, arrogant, nasty human beings who lived for their ideology and eventually came to bite him. Sure. There are lovely people, that I, and I say this with all sincerity, there are lovely, wonderful people who I believe are profoundly misguided. But then there are some real nasty pieces of work. And General Convention is spiritually, it's exhausting, it's difficult because the nasty pieces of work seem to dominate, even though they're not the majority. Now, and but they, they create the culture of just unpleasantness and unkindness, and it's far from being a Christian gathering. Now, you don't want to bring mean, your kids there. You and, really I come, you and I come out of General Convention, and it's like we've been to something evil. And I, I don't use that word lightly, but it takes weeks to recover. You, I can fly home from a Gafcon high, but I don't ever come home from an Episcopal Church uh, general convention high in any way, shape, or form. We generally have a team of people praying for us, and there are elements, not all of it, but there are elements that are void of spiritual uh, representation. And so what is difficult to discuss is really the demonic aspect of all this. Mm -hmm. There is a degree of sexual morality and bed hopping that takes place in these g gatherings. Yeah. And now a lot of people who go to general convention who don't have, if you will, the reporters or street smart sense that I and others have had are oblivious to this. But you know, when, when Steve Waring and I would go to executive council meetings and we would basically pick up the signals, we'd pick up the rendezvous, we'd see the all this and that of men and women engaging in, you know, married priests hooking up with uh, women. You see that and you feel that. That's not universal. But when you've got, and if you've got 2,000 people, let's just say 1% are like that, you've got 20 people, and those 20 people can poison the whole relationship. When you have adulterer bishops, uh, uh, should, can I name names? Uh, no, 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 no. When you have bleep, a bishops, bleep, 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 when you bleep, have bleep, bishops, <laughs> when you have bishops uh, who have been engaged and caught for uh, financial misconduct and malpractice, when you have people who have covered up sexual abuse for political and personal reasons, you that's not all. Of, but you just need a few of them to taint. The, you only need one kid to pee in the pool at the YMCA to get the lifeguard man. You don't have to have all 100 kids. One's enough. Boy, the, I have a great title for this uh, episode, but yes. And, 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 the, and the, what I'm trying to say is that general convention is as important as your annual parish meeting. And it's hard enough to get people to show up to the annual <laughs> parish meeting. But it's important. It's not urgent. But it has developed a culture that makes it really unpleasant. I'm so glad I'm not there anymore. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank I I thank them for live streaming. Uh, that that helps me a lot. It, Gafcon's live stream helped me a lot too. I, uh, it's a, a lot less work for NK TV, and it allows them to do a little bit of self promotion, which is absolutely fine. George, what a wonderful episode. We'll obviously have a lot more to talk about as General Convention uh, uh, continues. Hopefully, uh, we can do some uh, breaking updates. We do have Jeff Walton there. Uh, he's, uh, I've asked him if he'd do an unscripted uh, from the floor. That would be a lot of fun. And I hope to get that up in a couple of days. Can I, can I just, if I, if I were to give any advice or counsel, and, and I'm offering a pure opinion only, mm -hmm. watch Anglican Unscripted to find out what's going on but don't let this hurt your relationship with the living Lord Jesus Christ. No. God is so much bigger. Be, than, be anxious than in nothing, humans. absolutely. And be happy. Be happy that the economy of Austin, Texas, after that terror bombing incident earlier this year, is being uh, uh, re rejuvenated. Uh, and the cocktail bars, pickup lounges, and uh, it's like the the Seventh Fleets uh, sailed in. All the strip joints are going to be full. This yeah, well, it wasn't yesterday's quote, let's keep Austin weird. It wasn't, let's make Austin holy. Well, I don't think the Episcopal Church has the ability to do that. Not a big deal. Well, it, no, it, but it does have the ability to make it holy weird. <laughs> holy weird. I'm Kevin Carlson. And I'm George Conger, and you've been watching episode 417 of Anglican Unscripted.